Hey everyone, today I think I'm going to hit us all a little bit in the gut because <laughs> I think this is all of us. So today's podcast is called, Why Am I a Control Freak? C.S. Lewis said, if we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. I love that quote because Lewis puts into words what words so many reasons we are like we are. For everything down here that we desire, there is a reason. We are made in God's image and we cannot completely shake how He created us no matter how hard we may try. For beings made in His image, we sure have messed up this world and it seems to be getting worse. Why? One of the roots of all of our dysfunction is our desire to be autonomous. I know that's a big word. Most of you probably know it, but I looked it up so that we could learn together what it means. We want to be autonomous. And autonomous means not subject to control by others, independent. Oh, how we want to be independent. Having the power or right to govern ourselves. We want to be our own boss. There is only one being in the entire universe that fits that definition of autonomy, and it is God. He is self-sufficient, He is self-governing, He is the highest authority, and He is free from any other authority than Himself. How grateful we should all be that God is good. Our world shows His beauty and kindness as we look at all He's created. This world is fallen and sinful, and yet it still takes our breath away. I walked out of my house this morning, and it had rained, and the flowers that my husband had planted were in this um, container, and I'm just like, they're so beautiful. I had to take a picture. They're just beautiful just looking at my yard, just what's outside of my house truly may seem over the top, but it just makes me want to glorify God because He made that beauty for us to look at. He could have made this world any way He wanted to, and He made it beautiful. Every sunrise and every sunset tells us that the one who made it is all-powerful, kind, and full of perfect goodness. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit in the garden, it showed their desire to be like God. It was the temptation. It was what... um, Satan said, you'll be like God, and they wanted to be like God. They wanted to be in charge, know everything there is to be known, and not have to answer to anyone. Does that sound familiar to any of us? As soon as they sinned, I mean, it took no time. They turned on each other, threw each other under the bus. Never be surprised when people throw you under the bus. It is the most natural thing we humans do. His presence scared them. God's presence scared them. His questions bothered them. They were full of shame and they wanted to be far away from God. And we have been that way ever since. We don't like questions that expose our inadequacy. I don't like them. We want to cover up anything that would show our imperfections. We definitely don't want God being in complete control of our lives. The very thought of saying to God, you can do anything you want with me without any resistance on my part sends chills up and down most people's spines. Yet most people would say, I love God and He is perfectly good. They would say that with their mouths. Listen to what scripture says, Isaiah 29, 13. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules that they have been taught. We're like, what do I have to do to satisfy this God? And I'll do it. Our hearts are not connected to him the way he meant for them to be. I used to be that girl. My mouth said all the right things. However, my mouth rarely talked to God and my heart was closed off. Why? Because I was a control freak. To me, and I was a Christian, but to me, God was someone who filled children's hospitals with little ones who had cancer. I thought if I only obeyed hard enough and tried to talk about Him constantly, maybe He wouldn't hurt me and my precious children. 
I was so fearful of everything and I tried to act like I wasn't because I knew I was supposed to have joy and peace. I believe being a control freak is natural. Let me explain. When God created us, He meant for us to live in oneness with Him. He never meant for us to be independent. Since the fall of mankind, we value independence and practically worship it. We want to be self-sufficient, have no problems, <clears throat> and control every single thing and person we care about. We try to make our world paradise. However, people and circumstances have the power to throw us into a whirlwind of emotions. We try to have a good day and inevitably something happens and it gets ruined. Control, listen to me, control is an illusion. Anyone who thinks they are in control is delusional. Control belongs to only one with a capital O. Listen to what God says, Isaiah 45, 5 and 7. I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you though you have not acknowledged me so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, people may know there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and I create disaster. Yeah, God said it. Drop the mic. I, the Lord, do all these things. The reason we long for paradise is because we were created for paradise. We were not created for the chaos that now defines this planet. It scares us and it should. Our need for control is rooted in a great place. It is rooted in our need for the one who is in complete control. St. Augustine writes in his confessions, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Every single person that I've ever known truly has restlessness in them. And that restlessness is meant to drive us to the one who gives us complete rest for our souls. Until we let our control freakish selves become one with the one who's in control, we will live lonely, psycho lives. Yes, I used the word psycho. Control is delusional, and since none of us are in control, to try to build a kingdom where we are the king or the queen will ultimately tend to drive people away from us. The one thing we want is to keep them in our clutches, but even doing that drives people away. I promise you, they're only coming because they don't want to have to pay the price of not being around you. Control freak. You are miserable to be around. Your tactics are devastating to yourself and everyone else. I wrote down a few symptoms I could think of of our control freak illness. Silent treatment. So effective to control others without saying a word. Intimidation. Angry outbursts. Suspicion of everyone. Making people feel guilt shame and fear when they disappoint you, keeping grandchildren from grandparents for no good reason. There Sometimes there are good reasons, but for no good reason, it's a control issue. Oh, our need to do this is so devastating. If this, if I'm describing anybody, oh, ask God to help you. Posting things on social media to punish others, even if it's veiled. Saying things to make people feel less than, and everybody's favorite, creating an atmosphere of misery so you have company. Nothing like a miserable person to ruin everybody's good time. There are probably more, but that was the ones I could think of. It is my belief, <clears throat> and I could be wrong, that 100% of us are control freaks. Have you ever met a two-year-old that did not want sovereign control over everything and everyone? Maybe that's scientific proof, I don't know. 
We can let our control freak tendencies drive us to one of two places, and I believe it will drive us to one of two places always. It will drive us either crazy or to God. Most people will live in functional insanity until they get to the end of their lives. Control freaks normally don't even die well. They claw and fight to stay in the place where they have a say-so. When we leave Earth, our little kingdom that we've built will cease to matter. However, we can let our need to be in control drive us straight into God. It's why I drove straight into God because I looked at my, when I used to think about God being somebody who filled up, you know, gave kids cancer and all this stuff. When I used to feel that way toward God and I thought that way, looking at my three children and trying to control everything about them drove me so crazy that I thought I've got to get to God because I'm not going to make it. If something happens, I will lose my mind and it'll be over for me. So I thought I've got to somehow let these control issues drive me into the presence of this great God. And I'm going to tell you something, if you'll let him do that, he will take you there. If we are still breathing, it's not too late. Bad beginnings can equal beautiful endings if we will cooperate with God. I am not a control freak anymore. I can say that with absolute confidence. Not that I never try to control anything, but I don't hardly even have the desire to control anything. God has shown me his sovereignty and his control over this world, and it's so much better than anything we could do. It's never how we think it would be, but it's so much better. The rest he wants to give his children is incredible. God doesn't hold us accountable for being a control freak. He will only hold us accountable for staying one. We all start there, every single person. He understands our desire to control because he became one of us. He put this flesh on just like you and I have. Jesus had to deny his own desires. At one point, his desire to do his own will was so strong, he sweated drops of blood as he struggled to let God have his way. If we knew how tender he would be with us in our weaknesses, we would run to him and gladly let him be in control. The big difference between us and him is he sees the big picture. We see a muddled picture and we will never fully understand what he is doing this side of heaven. We have to decide we'll be okay with that. That's where faith comes in. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We have to, we have to let go of our control freakishness the same way we do everything else. We have to do it by faith. We have to decide to believe God, to believe reality, which is God is good. That's the root of so much of our problems. We don't believe he's good. Everything he does and allows may not be good, but it is for ultimate good. This is a coffee cup scripture coming up, but I'm telling you, God has just used it to rock my world as I was writing this. Um, Romans 8, 28. And we know, listen to that, and we know. That is like, I am so sure of this, that for those who love God, and this is conditional, you gotta say, do I love God? That's the one place that I had to get, um, get right, I guess, because I had to get on my face way back when and say, God, I do not love you. I'm just afraid of you, but I want to love you and I'm willing to love you if you'll help me. We can't even love God on our own. He has to put his Holy Spirit in us and then we have to go to him and say, God, let your Holy Spirit be free in me to love you. We need God for everything, but that's where I started because I wanted all things to work together for good, but I knew I had to love Him. So we know that for those who love God, all things, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. And we know means we are aware of this. This is a truth, it is reality. That means we can quit being control freaks and micromanagers cause we, when we completely give up all our rights and control to God. He, when we do that, when we give up all of our rights and all control, He takes it upon Himself to make sure every single thing in our lives, everything, y'all this is mind blowing, everything will work together for good.
Put any situation you can think of in that scripture. I wrote down a few, and we know that for those who love God, losing my job because I won't compromise, finding out I have cancer, having my spouse walk away when I wanted it to work, even if people, my own family, hate me and reject me for my faith. Put any other thing in there, the worst thing you can think of, the death of someone, will all work together for good. Good? How in the world can God make a promise like that in the midst of a world that thought up crucifixion and concentration camps? Why? Because He is God and He is in control of every single hair on our head and every single thing that happens. Nothing touches this girl right here that has not passed through His holy hands first. Knowing that, nothing compares to it. There is no shame in admitting we need that assurance. He didn't say that he was in control and we simply need to deal with whatever comes. He knows us. He knows how tender and afraid we are. He left us with a massive truth that not only is he in control, but he is making sure everything that touches his precious child individually, that means you, yes, you, you matter that much will work together for good. For our troubled minds, to me, that truth is a little piece of paradise in this dark world.